What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WrestleMania moments WWE doesn't want you to see. This is gonna be a good one. There are some moments in WrestleMania that uh, WWE tries to erase or, you know, sweep under the rug. It just, you know, and even outside of WrestleMania moments, sometimes on regular live television, there's some things that happen that uh, you're like, whoa. Uh, a noticeable one, obviously, is the Mickey James, Trish Stratus match, and Mickey James going a little bit uh, off script and using her tongue in a very suggestive manner which was also great to see as a growing young man so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support on the channel still under the weather but i'm getting a little bit better and uh let's get right into this vid you've heard it a million times wrestlemania is the grandest stage of them all the biggest show of the year heck the wwe scooby-doo movie even compared wrestlemania to christmas we can't cancel wrestlemania that's like canceling christmas when it comes to WrestleMania, there's a lot of moments that WWE wants you to remember. Daniel Bryan winning the world title, John mm -hmm. Cena beating JBL, and many more. While there's hundreds of iconic <laughs> moments WWE is glad to show you, there are also some moments that they want you to totally forget. Yes, sir. They even took it a step further and have erased these moments from history. Number one, a fan jumps the barricade and starts taking off his clothes. Arguably one of the greatest WrestleMania matches was at WrestleMania 23 when mm -hmm. Shawn Michaels and John Cena went one on one. Every fan, both in attendance and watching at home, just wanted to sit back and watch these two phenomenal stars do what they do. That is, except for one guy. Right before the match started, a fan sitting near the front row got over the barricade and oh, began wow. taking off his clothes. The intruder even made it into the ring, but security got to him pretty quick. Wow. This was, of course, removed from all future versions of WrestleMania 23. The oh, damn. That's crazy. And I remember, uh, I think I ended up watching WrestleMania 23 after it had happened. So I, I'm sure they probably had cut it out, but I didn't get a chance to watch it live or whatnot. So that's crazy. The funniest part, though, was when Shawn Michaels began waving at the fan as he was taken away. Number two, wow, Roddy didn't know Piper that. versus Bad News Brown. <clears throat> there are plenty of Rowdy Piper moments that WWE are happy to remind you of. However, mm -hmm. there's one that's getting erased. At WrestleMania 6, Piper took on Bad News Brown. Presumably to get more heat, Roddy Piper painted his body half black for the match. Due to this being a very controversial moment yeah. in WrestleMania history, Piper and Brown's match, as well as the pre-match interview, have been removed from the version of WrestleMania 6 on the WWE Network and on Peacock. Which brings me to another part of your face, your mouth. Number three, wow. Mickey James makes an inappropriate gesture. Oh, this is the one right the here. 22 featured one of the best women's matches between two of the best female stars in WWE history, Trish Stratus and Mickey James. Mm -hmm. The match was going pretty well, and the crowd was into it. After wrestling for several minutes, James decided to ad lib and made a gesture with her hands and tongue. Oh. While it was crude, Mickey felt it fit with the storyline of her being a psycho Trish Stratus fan. And keep in mind, WWE was still TV 14 at yeah, the time. Yeah, they was. However, this became a very infamous moment and was removed from all future releases of WrestleMania 22. Oh, they should have kept it. It was so great to watch that growing up. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then you get backstage. What happens then? Not good. That was not good. It was not good at all. I got yelled at. It was like, oh my god. He's like, we have to edit this out of everything. And I'm like, oh no. Like number four, Chris mm -mm -mm. Jericho gives the finger. WrestleMania 19 was one of the greatest <laughs> WrestleManias of all time. Part of the reason was because it featured the return of Shawn Michaels on the grandest stage of them all. The Heartbreak Kid hadn't wrestled a match at WrestleMania in five years, so it was exciting seeing him compete again. Michael's opponent was Chris Jericho, who was the heel or bad guy. Mm -hmm. Fitting that role, Y2J decided to flip Shawn Michaels off during the <laughs> This doesn't seem too bad. Stone Cold even did it later that same night. For whatever reason though, in the DVD and WWE Network versions of WrestleMania 19, WWE cuts away before Chris Jericho came no, out man. However, Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler still react to it on commentary. <laughs> Paul Orndorff makes a racist gesture. Whoa. In the opening match of WrestleMania 2, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff took on the Magnificent Morocco, who was being managed by Mr. Fuji. During the match, Orndorff body slammed Morocco, which got a big pop from the crowd. 
Mr. Wonderful then made a slanty-eyed gesture towards Mr. Fuji, followed by the Italian salute. Oh, wow. When the match appeared on the WWE Network, this is edited out so that Paul Orndorff's actions wouldn't be seen. Oh, damn. Number that six, is... Michael Cole accidentally... That definitely is a, <laughs> a racist uh, type of gesture. ...he spoils the main event. Everyone makes mistakes, but at WrestleMania 15, Michael Cole made a pretty big one. As the Hell in a Cell was lowering for Undertaker and Big Bossman's match, Michael Cole was promoting the post-WrestleMania show on the Home Shopping Network. Cole accidentally gave away the winner of the main event when he said this. On the Home Shopping Network, it's the show after the show. Post-game comments, we'll hear from the new WWF champion. You'll have a chance to buy some exclusive... The issue uh, was that the WWE Championship match hadn't happened yet. By saying the new WWE yeah. Champion, it let fans know that The Rock was going to be losing the title to Steve Austin later that night, uh, which is what happened. Of course, this bit was removed from all future versions of WrestleMania 15. I wonder how Vince McMahon reacted when he heard Michael Cole say this. Oh, I know Vince was probably fucking heated. But, hey, that was a young Michael Cole. He is, he is pretty much grown like perfectly into the role he is in now like as the the lead commentator man uh, i know we give michael cole a lot of flack for you know some of his cringe commentary and i'm sure a lot of that has a lot to do with what vince and everyone else in the back is telling him to say it in his ear but at the same time we can't i can't appreciate what he has done and uh what he continues to bring on the WWE commentary team. Number seven, the DX band performs America the Beautiful. WrestleMania has featured many singers and musicals performing <coughs> America the Beautiful to begin mm -hmm. the show. WWE is proud to show you all these performances, except for one. At WrestleMania 14, WWE did something a bit different and had the DX band perform an alternative version of America the Beautiful. Oh, say can you see? The performance was booed instantly, and it's not hard to understand why. The DX band's rendition of the song was so awful that it was only shown on the live pay-per-view and never again. At the Number eight. Why? Who thought that was a good idea to have them do? Oh my god. Okay. Hey, Jack Swagger's briefcase troubles. WrestleMania 26 was the last time a Money in the Bank ladder match took place at the Grand. I miss Money in the Bank ladder matches at WrestleMania. That needs to be a thing. Uh, the pay per views is cool. But I get it, they have the women's Money in the Bank ladder match now, so they have to have a pay-per-view for it now. So it works in that sense, but I do miss it just being exclusively to WrestleMania. It was the one match you was looking forward to seeing a lot of times. The stage for them all. The wrestlers <clears throat> involved definitely went all out too. The match was filled with some really cool moments. Some that may have even made it into our top 50 OMG WrestleMania moments. While WWE wants you to remember those, there's one moment they have erased. When the winner of the match, Jack Swagger, went to grab the briefcase, he had some trouble pulling it down. If you watch it on the WWE Network or the DVD release, it looks like he pulled it down pretty fast. Mm -mm. However, if you see the live version, it takes the All-American American roughly 15 seconds to get the briefcase off the hook. Number 9, the WrestleMania kickoff panel buries the word diva. Mm. WrestleMania 32 was a huge event for many reasons. One of them was that the Divas title was retired and the women's yes. championship was introduced. This also marked the end of the term divas in WWE yes. and the female wrestlers would now be referred to as superstars. The kickoff panel reacted to the announcement and nothing seemed that controversial. However, after the event, the panel's reaction was removed from the WWE Network version of the kickoff show. The only guess is that Renee Young sort of attacked the term diva, and WWE might have felt like it made them look bad. To be WWE Superstar, getting rid of that diva acronym, and, and now just having that women's championship. Number 10. Chris Which was needed. Them getting rid of the diva term, <clears throat> they had to, bro. It doesn't... It doesn't give you that sense of, like, equality. Like, they're divas, so, you know what I'm saying? We're not supposed to take them seriously. At least now, 
we're supposed to take them seriously, you know. I just wish they were booked better. Like, the the whole women's division needs to be booked a little bit better in the sense of more more women should be, I guess, pushed in the forefront other than the same three to four women, you know what I'm saying? So, hopefully they can continue to expound up upon that. But, uh, yeah, them getting rid of the Divas movement and all that stuff, Divas stuff, that was the best thing they could have did for the women's division. Benoit. <clears throat> of course, Chris Benoit in general is someone WWE usually doesn't associate with yep. due to his murder-suicide in mm -hmm. 2007. There's plenty of moments WWE has ignored or completely removed yep. due to them involving Benoit, and WrestleMania is no different. While Benoit's WrestleMania matches are available to watch on the WWE Network and were included on DVD re-releases, WWE has erased the Canadian Crippler in other places. When WWE released a series of videos on their YouTube channel called WrestleMania in 60 seconds, Benoit's matches were completely skipped over. Mm -hmm. On their website, WWE has released photo galleries of every WrestleMania, but they do not include any pictures from Chris Benoit's matches, even when he was in the main event of WrestleMania 20. In 2014, a DVD was released featuring every match Shawn Michaels had at WrestleMania, every match except the one he had with Chris Benoit and Triple H in 2004. Speaking of which, WWE used the picture of Eddie Guerrero and Benoit celebrating with their world titles in a promotional piece, and Benoit was literally erased from the image. Mm -hmm. Any moments we missed? Let us know by leaving a comment. And yeah, man. Uh, it's one of those type of things where I, I get it because of just the heinous act that happened um they can't you know what i'm saying i know they they still have certain benoit clips and stuff like that on wwe network or uh, well on peacock and stuff but they they can't they can't bro they can't just actively put that out there you feel me only because of just how that situation ended bro it was it was tragic all around and you know they Nah, can't. Re it's hard to glorify somebody who did something so heinous in their last minutes of life, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 hard. That's why he'll never be put into the WWE Hall of Fame. He can't. There's no bro. You can't you can't glorify that. No matter how messed up he was, he was you know he was mentally. You can't. He killed himself. He killed people he cared about family members like his people he you know he loved like that's that's a that's a, a a tricky one man so it's understandable for wwe to do that man but uh i already know what's my uh favorite moment from this video i don't even think i have to tell y'all y'all know what y'all y'all know what my favorite moment is if you know what my favorite moment from this video is just put it down in the comment section below i don't even have to say anything but I appreciate all the love and support on this channel, man. Road to 80K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.